Ken, I want to ask you about living well. We live fragmented lives in a very fragmented society. I've got my work life, my family life, my social life, got my church life. Like, how do you hold it all together? How do you live life well? The key piece of it is that well-being matters. Living well matters. Mm. Uh, and it matters not only to, to God who made us, but it matters to us and the <laughs> people around us yeah. so that we can live at ease with God, at ease with others, and at ease with ourselves. And that's the objective of it. So in John 14, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I don't give as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. That's the key message. And that isn't a momentary peace, is it? Jesus is talking about a constant peace at work in your lives. Yeah, it's like Paul says he's learning to be content mm. in all things. And being content means having the right linkages in all parts of my life drawn, drawn together so that whatever is happening to me, I know that there is a bigger picture at work. And, and that's really important in trying to live well mm. is, as Psalm 61 talks about, we, we need something... Uh, uh, he, there is a rock that is higher than myself. Mm. And when we look to that rock, which is Jesus Christ, actually that gives us this great perspective. Mm. See, what stress does is it kills perspective. Mm. What good living does is that it restores the perspective to the way in which God really intended. I mean, it's easier said than done. <laughs> I mean, this is, not, this is not just a flick of a switch. Yeah. We learn it. Yeah. Um, Christians talk quite a lot about finding a good work-life balance. How, how do you find that kind of balanced life? Well, Pete, I'm nervous of that phrase, a work-life balance. Right. Because Why? what? Well, because what it suggests is that there is uh, life, you know, which you live, your family, yeah. friends, football, and then there's something called work. Yeah, so it's uh, more compartmentalizing. So exactly. So the point about it is, is that if you're going to have these two together, it's not surprising that they don't link <laughs> because yeah. your, your mindset is already said, I need to balance. Mm. Now, I understand what people are saying, but the, what I prefer is to, to talk about life balance. Mm. How do you balance the whole of your life or how do you have a, a work-life integration Mm. How do you pull those two things together? And Paul, in writing to the Colossians, talks about, you know, in Christ Jesus, in him, all things mm. hold together. And that's been a formative verse of my life, mm. is to be able to see that everything that I do, you know, has a kind of a hook. It's a glue that is mm. Christ who is holding all these things together. Because otherwise... They just want to spin out of control, yeah. you know, sort of work, family, you know. Sort of. Yeah. So, so what does this integrated life look like that, you know, is found in Christ? But what does it look like? Well, it's striking the right, and now if I may use the word balance, you know, <laughs> within, this, within this overall structure. It's striking yeah. the right levels of front of mind attention, mm. uh, front of mind um, activity. What, what is it that you're really spending your time doing? And how is it affecting the rest of, uh, of, of your life? And keeping priorities must be pretty central to this vision of, of living an integrated life. Well, this is, this is key stuff. Priorities matter. Mm. And the reason that priorities matter is that we have to learn to say no. <laughs> And so you have to establish, firstly, the overall picture. Mm. And, and, and for me, it is, there is God. There are the key relationships of our lives, whether it's a family or if you're married, your wife or your key friends. And then there's the work that we're doing. And quite often, these get muddled up. Would you put them in that order? God first, key relationships, work? I would, actually. Yeah. But, of course, the danger is, is that one moves the work bit mm. uh, into you know, almost before the, before the family. Mm. So, so let's just take those three then. Like, how do you keep those priorities in place? How, how do you keep God first? Well, that's the constant reminder. It's, 
It's the daily reminder that we have. That's why, you know, I, I think it's a wise thing to start the day as soon as you can mm. by reading a piece of scripture. That is the first piece, is, is you've got to remember that, that God comes first. The first priority is God. And, and you've got to consciously mm. remind yourself of this. Otherwise, if you're anything like me, I mean, you've been out of control. God, for, forgotten but you know within the first two minutes <laughs> yeah. the second priority is the family and relationships mm. where it's so easy to be you know not neglecting totally but sort mm. of half interested my wife has a has a phrase that she's always uses of me <laughs> well not always I'm learning <laughs> which is will you listen to me with your eyes yeah you know so the so you know I've got my bit here and I'm <laughs> Darling, I'm listening to you, and then I repeat the last sentence of what she said. <laughs> because which, you have no idea what came before it. <laughs> no, because it, I was paying attention, but half of me was paying yeah. attention. Yeah. Mm. And then the workplace is, you know, head down, yeah. uh, you know, focus on it. Um, you know, you feel free then to know that mm. the priority is all right, and you, just, you, you work at it, you mm. work hard. Yeah. Uh, you're not just a sort of drifting through life. You've been working in the financial world for almost 40 years. You can't have got this right every year over 40 years. There must have been moments where things did spiral out of control, you know. It happens all the time. I wish, I wish one could say, well, you know, <laughs> I went through a phase. Yeah. It happens all the time. And the price is vigilance. You just need to be vigilant. Mm. Uh, because the prize of all of this is, hey, I really want to enjoy life. Mm. You know, life in all its fullness. I, I want to be able to know that, that, that God's intentions for us are to live well. I mean, so often people think that the whole nature of a relationship with God is a whole complete series of don'ts. Mm. Well, it's not that. And, and curiously, there were times when I think, to be honest, I spent more time in church. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. With church meetings, we were building a thriving church, and church was growing. There were huge demands of time and energy mm. and money. And I think I neglected, uh, you know, the attention uh, with my family. And then two great friends um, formed up to me on a church weekend away <laughs> <laughs> and said, um, about spending time with your wife. Yeah, well, you know, of course. I mean, she's perfectly, is she all happy? Perfectly happy. <laughs> but of course she wasn't. Yeah. And it was a timely reminder. And, you know, thank God for godly friends yeah. and who are able to, to speak, you know, words of rebuke. There is a level to which identity is found in the work that we do and in the relationships that we find belonging in. But where, where should we be finding ultimate identity? Well, I think the, the, the picture, again, is Jesus. Jesus came uh, and he was baptized before he'd done anything before mm. he'd done any work mm. the spirit of god and the voice of god was there saying this is my beloved son that word you know is the affirmation word mm. is that love comes before destiny your identity which is in the loving relationship with god that's the basis mm. of, whole, of what holds all of our, our lives together, is that the love of God flows out from us, into us, mm. and around us. So once you know the love of God, once you know that security, mm. then you begin to find, you know, well, what is my destiny? What is my calling mm. uh, in, in life? But too often we say, well, this is my destiny, I'm going to work, I'm at work, mm. now I'm going to find my identity. And that's completely the wrong yeah. way around. And, and my hunch is that for a lot of people in the workplace, that's what's under threat. You know, work beginning to define them or finding identity elsewhere. W would that be the case? I think that would be the case. And one of the reasons is that there is no restraint. So the first bit of it is you've got to be able to say no. And I think we're very bad. Hmm. Uh, at saying no to, to certain things. And again, the example of Jesus is, is so important. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus tells the disciples to go on a mission to the people of Israel and not to go to the Gentiles nor to the Samaritans. It wasn't because he didn't love those people, mm. but he had a specific task 
for his disciples. Our natural instinct literally is to try and do more mm. uh, than we are either equipped to do or mm. called to do or enabled to do. So we need to re learn to refuse the excessive demands mm. of the workplace. And the workplace will make demands. Mm. I think that this lesson is being learned. I mean, major corporations throughout the world want good, well-adjusted people who are at work, who are living well and can mm. work well and be productive and enjoy what they're doing. Ken, we've talked about some of the big priorities, God, key relationships, work, but a lot of the decisions we make aren't necessarily in those categories. They're smaller decisions. How, how do we prioritise then? What I think is really important is you have to establish the core of your, of your life at work. And once that core is established, you know, what it is that I've really been attracted for to work in this business. Then you look at the chores mm. which are around it. Now, all of us have to do chores. Mm. You know, it's the stuff I don't really like doing. Every job has chores. Every job has chores. But when the core is strong and right, mm. then we can live with the chores. Can I want to ask you about rest? What does that look like? Is that a day out each week? Well, it's not only a day out each week, but it's certainly that. It's a priority day out. Uh, in, in other words, it's not just, oh, everything stops. It is a conscious decision that at that moment I will actually take a rest, almost like God, you know, in the, in the phases in which the world uh, was created. In one of those phases, he rested from his creative activity. Mm. And so it's a priority time. And f for us, uh, as Christians, I think it's, Sunday is a good time because we refocus on God, we join the people of God in worship. One of the things I love about the Sabbath, the roots of the Sabbath, is it, it was given to the nation of Israel to remind them they're not slaves in Egypt anymore. They used to work 24-7, but God says, no, I want you to observe the Sabbath because you're not slaves, you're free. So enjoy your freedom and, and rest. Yeah, and that rest, of course, is, is also part of you know, learning to, you know, enjoying sleep. We need yeah. sleep. Sleeping well, having a hobby that you can that you can practice, maybe gardening for you, kids, <laughs> uh, taking physical exercise, yeah. using that rest time as being something quite different yeah. from what you would normally be doing. We've looked at some of the theory of, of like living life well, yeah. but in terms of like in reality, it doesn't all plan out just as perfectly as that, does it? There are moments where things do get crazy yeah. at work and you're not in control of that. Yeah, and I think there are seasons that we will go through uh, times of, of, of intensity where you, you just have to realize that actually for those moments or, or that period of time mm. you've got to concentrate on the, the, the job in hand and, and a, a, a stressful time for a, a teacher before an inspection would be one of those examples. But we need to know that that is the exception. That is not actually how everything should happen all the time. Yeah. I want to ask you about joy in work. Because some people have the, the mindset of, oh, I've got my job. It needs to be done. I need to pay the bills. But there's something important about finding joy in your work. You found joy in your work in, in the financial world. How, how did you find joy? The joy comes from the habitual doing of that which God has called you to do. Yeah. And that joy is a deep rest. You know, does it mean I'm happy every moment of the day at work? No. Uh, happiness, we're not promised happiness. We're promised fulfillment. Mm. We're promised that our lives will be integrated in Christ Jesus. We're promised that we will live with purpose and with an understanding that we don't go alone. Mm. But it's not always just happy, clappy stuff. Ken, we've spoken about rest and the, you know, a weekly rhythm of taking time out to recharge the batteries. But I guess there's, there's a, another discipline, which is you know, holidays, taking time out on a more you know, yearly cycle. Is, th is that important? The, the lives that we're living are, are very intense and we need breaks from them. Whatever work mm -hmm. that we're doing, the world in which we are operating is much more pressurized. There is much more stress now than there was, which money can't compensate for, yeah. and which time out, time to relax, time to be with friends, time to be with, on holiday, is a crucial part of living well. 
What I love about what you've said, Ken, it's a vision for living life well in every sphere of life. And if we look at Genesis, it's the, a picture of human flourishing. And then if we look at the promises of Jesus saying, I've come that you may have life and life in all its fullness. And I think that's what we all long for. Um, thanks for your wisdom as to how we find this integrated life, how we live each day with purpose. Mm-hmm.